Today, let's talk about attitude control using magnet torquers, and specifically how that impacts my satellite. Let's answer a couple of quick questions as to why I even care about attitude control. And the primary reason is because I plan on using the Iridium constellation of satellites in order to communicate back down to Earth. And why would I want to use the Iridium constellation of satellites? Because for about $250, I can get myself a modem, which allows me to communicate with the constellation and essentially simplifies all of the communication hassle that I would otherwise have to go through. Often other CubeSats use communication in the UHF communications band, which generally involves some sort of ham radio operation, which I could do, but really I'm not interested in getting into all of that at this time, which is why using something like Iridium is so appealing to me, because Essentially, all I need to do is buy the $250 modem and pay for the data service through Iridium, which isn't cheap, by the way. It, it is a significant price per byte, and I can get into more of that later. But it is pretty simple to use, and I am preferring that at this point because for $250, I can buy a completed product and essentially plug it into my CubeSat. And once again, the reason I need to really care about attitude control is because I need to be facing the Iridium constellation of satellites, which are orbiting at about 780 kilometers in a low Earth orbit, so I need to be pointing towards them. So, what are magnet torquers? Essentially, magnet torquers are literally just a coil of wire wrapped around generally some sort of iron or ferrous core, and that's it. That it is pretty much as simple as that as a coil of wire that you have some positive voltage over here and ground over here and you have current flowing through this wire through this loop of wire and this generates a and this generates a, a magnetic dipole and with this magnetic dipole you can think of it just as a regular old magnet it'll react against the Earth's magnetic field uh, creating a torque very similarly to how a compass works. But instead of having just a regular old compass, uh, you're using that same principle to control the orientation of a spacecraft. And there's a lot of great things about these. There are no moving parts. They are mechanically simple in part because there are no moving parts and it's just a coil of wire wrapped around something. Electrically powered and since you're generating energy from the nearly infinite resource of the sun, these magnet torquers have essentially an unlimited lifespan. However, there are certainly some problems with magnet torquers. Specifically, they result in a control system that is under-actuated. And I'll show you what that is. Here we have a nice little model of the Earth. We have the magnetic north pole of the Earth. And you can see the direction of the B field or of the magnetic field going around to the south pole. And these eyes are the representation of what the Iridium satellite constellation would be. Um, essentially, I want the antenna for my Iridium modem to always be facing radially outward from the Earth, always facing the satellites. However, the problem with a magnet torquer is that you don't have easy three-axis control over the CubeSat. Getting into a little bit of maths, we see that the torque affecting the CubeSat is equal to... We see that it's the cross product of the magnetic field of the Earth with this product here, which is the magnetic dipole moment. So that's the number of turns of wire around a core, the amount of amps going through the wire, and then A, which stands for the area of the loop of wire. The only tricky thing is the cross product, so we just have to make sure to get all of our directions straight. Here's a scenario for you. Let's say that we have our little cube set out here, and let's say that it has a magnet torquer on board. Now, what directions can I spin this cube set? And to figure this out, all we really need to know is we have three vectors. We have this area vector, which is the direction perpendicular to the plane of the direction of the coil. If you have just a simple coil of wire, you have the area vector is either coming out of the page or going into the page, depending on which way the current is flowing. And then the direction of the B field, just follow the arrows here of the magnetic field. They, fo they flow from north to south. To figure out what, what torques we have, we use the right-hand rule. And with the right-hand rule, my thumb would be the area vector of the coil. 
uh, my pointer finger would be the B field or the magnetic field and then my middle finger is the torque. Really all I have to do here is just point my finger in the direction of the B field and that'll determine because I have free range at this point of putting the magnet torquers wherever I want. Presumably I'd have all the magnet torquers in three axes, but in theory I can place them wherever. So uh, essentially I have, uh, okay, we have one coming out and one going over there. Okay, so if we have, let's say, we have our little axes table here, X, Y, and Z. I have, I can create torques in this example that are pointing torque X, torque Y, and I do not have the ability to create torque Z. So since I can create a torque in the X direction and in the Y direction, uh, and I can't create one in the Z direction, this means that I have an underactuated system and I can't actually well, I can't easily obtain three-axis control. You'll see some conflicting opinions about this online. There are some statements that you can't have three-axis control with using magnet torquers alone, and I don't think that's accurate. Here's a link to at least one uh, study that I found that claims to show you how to achieve three-axis control using some control theory that is a uh, bit beyond what I studied in college. However, I think I know what they're getting at the solution to being able to have three axis control, so being able to control which direction this CubeSat is pointing, just a matter of some nonlinear equations which are non-trivial, but I think it's possible to implement. So let's walk through a couple of examples of what exactly I mean by uh, the torque in the X and the torque in the Y and not having the torque in the Z and what this actually means for the CubeSat. So let's say I have Let's just mark this side, side A. So what happens if you want to torque in the X direction? The CubeSat will move around this axis. Let's see, so that would be the X direction. So the whole thing would just turn like this. So the, we still see the A, it just doesn't move, or it just rotates. If we want to torque in the Y direction, that is this way, but we have the A would now appear up top so it would rotate this way. Now the question is, what if you wanted to move, if you wanted to point this face over here? So what if you wanted to have, let's say this was the A for antenna, did we want to have the antenna right here facing the Iridium network of satellites? So how would you do that with this control scheme? Since right now I can only create these two torques, how do I point this face over here? And I think the solution uh, and I think what the paper I had linked was describing is that the first thing you do is torque in the Y direction. You have the antenna up here, and then you torque in the, in the X direction so you can actually move down here, and there you go. You have the antenna facing the direction you want. It's kind of a roundabout way to get there, but I think three-axis control is possible via some nonlinear stuff that I don't fully understand yet, and I can't confirm that statement, but I think it's true. All this being said... I think magnet torquers are a really uh, neat way of achieving attitude control and definitely something that I will continue to use on my CubeSat even if I don't end up using it for this explicit purpose of pointing an antenna because they also have uses for just detumbling the CubeSat and this is a well-known documented use case for magnet torquers just to detumble the satellite once it has been released. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Uh, let me know what you think, Is if this control scheme, if I should try to implement something like this, or if I should just abandon Iridium and use a non-directional antenna with a UHF band or some other band of communication that doesn't require this amount of pointing just for basic operations. Anyway, thanks for watching.